Welcome back, everyone. So, joining us, we have Lewis, who is back. Yay! 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 So I'm releasing Control back, and he will now be Horatio from here on for it. And he has been caught up with what has happened. So, let's remove the bookmark and continue our story. Liberators, you are all inside of your rooms, just relaxing, and a few hours go by, no issues. And it gets to be about uh, 3 o'clock. Um, you can head down and grab some lunch before dinner begins. Or you can wait off and continue and meet up and go to dinner. The choice is yours. At some point, uh, Minako's going to go up to Horatio's door and knock on it. Hey, um, remember earlier they talked about the arcane scrub? I I thought maybe you'd want to join me. She, she kind of... Um, puts a hand to her wrist and, and looks up at him and says, Horatio, I, I thought maybe we should have a conversation. Yeah, I mean, uh, we definitely have a lot to talk about. And he's kind of just, he's not making eye contact with her, with Minako. <clears throat> uh, is the, the Sapphire Scrub now? Um, well, I was just going to go check it out. I thought, I thought maybe you could join me and we could talk a bit. All right, let's, let's go. All right, so you all head out the room a little bit early, uh, walk down the stairs, and you go towards the wall. Uh, looking at the wall, you hold out your badges and uh, proclaiming that you wish to go to the bottom floor. And, and so the door appears once again magically, and stepping through, you are brought to that same staircase, walking down into the uh, the main uh, hallway, crossing by all the people who are there. Some people staring at you, some people not. You make it over following the signs to the sapphire scrub uh entering in it's very warm really humid here and you see there are two human attendants who go welcome to the sapphire scrub would you, are you interested in getting one of our packages uh yes we um we uh we we, we got the pass and we figured we'd take a look here could you uh would you be able to attend to us and she kind of holds up that little uh pass that they were given before Oh, why, yes. Oh, you have the deluxe package. Yes, ooh, you get the Sapphire Scrub special for one hour. If you want more, it's an additional 25 gold per hour. But yes, please, come with me. And uh, the uh, one attendant goes and brings you throughout. The floor has definitely changed from its normal, from a normal marble floor to a stone uh, jungle-like feel. And like I said, it's extremely humid in here. Uh, instantly, since you both are... Wait, are you... Who's are who's trained in Arcana, or are you both trained in Arcana? Uh, I believe Horatio is. Uh, Manaka is not trained in Arcana. She's trained in religion. Horatio is trained in Arcana. Okay, so Horatio, you do feel just the the feeling of just arcane particles floating into the air. In the air, it, it's almost soothing to you. Not more of like in a body sense, but more of in a a uh, arcane sense. So like the magic energies in you feel lifted and is slightly empowered um but alas they go ahead and say um this way please so you all in your own separate quarters and there there's a locker room where you can undress and there are signs and instructions saying what you do seems like they're telling you to walk out into the main back area which you can see in a distance just in a towel uh, blocking whatever areas you wish to block and to lay down onto the table an attendant will come and begin the scrub of the sapphire Monaco follows the instructions, not uh, not not pausing uh, at the uh, or balking at any of them, and just sort of goes to go get her scrub. Uh, Horatio also just follows the instructions and just has a towel around his waist. Okay, so you go ahead and cover yourself in the towel and go lead back to the back doorway. Opening up, you are brought into a very humid room where steam is filled up. Um, there are several open tables. There doesn't seem to be much of anyone in here, but you're all, you're both brought into the same kind of general area, albeit on different sides. Uh, after sitting down onto the table following the instructions, uh, almost instantly a presence is felt uh, next to you, and uh, they say to you both, um, Welcome, uh, Deluxe Package members. This is the Sapphire Scrub. Enjoy. And they begin to go ahead and doing a massaging therapy for about an hour, rubbing all types of salts and and uh, creams onto you, giving you a very luxurious massage. If there's something you wish to talk about during, you can go ahead and brain chat. 
Horatio, I, I, I just, after King fell, I, I, I stayed by his side because I was so worried about what had happened. If what he was going through was because I stopped what you were, what you asked him to do, what the two of you had done. And I felt so terrible. I just, I just want you to know that I'm not coming from a place of malice. Uh, I, I want to believe that, Monaco. I really do. But I just, I'm... I ask a lot of questions, you know, and I just, how did you even know that we were in that room? Because, well... You can be honest with me. Well, I know I can be, but it's n not that. I, Horatio, can I show you? Sure. I know a spell. Tonight, when you go to bed, let me know, and I will show you. You know, that's going to be a little difficult for me to trust, right? Yeah, I, I know, but you're going to have to. I... Please, it's it's important that you know. Does it have to do with him? It it always does. But did did you choose him or did he choose you? Horatio, I don't. There wasn't a choice about it. Hmm. Well, I believe you have a choice now. But if you need to use magics in order to show me, then I'll be receptive. Thank you. <sighs> Thank you for trusting me this last time. I know. I know. I violated that trust but thank you don't mention it um i just want you to know that i have everyone's best interest at heart you know i when i met king and duran i was i didn't even know how important they were gonna be to me but now even though duran might hate it i'd easily give my life for both of them i want to be able to say the same thing about you monaco i and you see uh over at the other table she, even though we're talking through our minds she, she just starts crying into the table, like face down. I, it'll, maybe you, after you see, anyway. Mm. It sure does make me feel soft, this massage. Yeah, it's, it's really good. So you all continue your conversation and the massage goes on for an hour. During that, it stops and you hear, your hour has been completed. If you wish to continue, you can deposit, uh, 25 gold and we will continue, uh, for another hour what would you like to do oh thank you so much for for the one hour but i think we're gonna i think we're gonna have to go yeah we're gonna make our way thank you and um Arishi begins to get up from the table and if you can see him monaco on his back right towards the top like right in the center below his neck there is the corporis arcana tattooed onto his back just a symbol and he kind of gets up and goes back to change she she notices it but doesn't say anything um and then uh also goes back to change okay so you better finish changing and you feel invigorated although maybe emotionally drained but you both gain 1d6 so just write that down inspiration but you feel refreshed after that and you put on your clothes you meet back up uh the rest of you um it's getting toward dinner time now. You all arouse from your slumbers and whatever else you were doing. What would you like to do next? I'll go down to the main floor and get us a table. Actually, um, take it back. I will, I will ask the halfling who we got our reservations from uh, where they do the story time and try to get a table near there. Okay, you walk downstairs and go over to the elderly gentleman. He goes, "Oh, oh yes, the story time will happen in about a in about uh, two hours. If you want to hang about, you can come to the stage area. Each person walks on stage and tells their story." Oh, okay. Uh, is there a place to get a table that's near there, or uh, is there a preferred dining section? And he points over towards the left. Uh, right here is where all the audience members will be seating. If you want to seat up close, then, well, then you better come early. It's pretty popular here. Uh, understood. I'll go grab a table. Ooh, the early bird gets the worm. I hope you have a good story to tell. <laughs> Maybe. And he points over towards the dining area where you see all the tables. They're all nice uh, tables. Some of them lead to the outdoors patio, uh, but it looks like the stage is only on the inside. Okay. So then I'll get a table that's close by the stage and make sure there's enough chairs for everybody. Okay. Um, after resting a little bit, I'm sure we had a little fooled around a little bit, but after resting for a while, 
I'll say to Duran, I I have to tell you something before I tell the rest of the, the group. And I'll sort of like sit up on the bed, cross my legs, and say, come sit next to me, uh, Ho- Hoven, which is home in Elven. And I'll say, you were absolutely right. And I'm sorry for doubting you. I harbor, I am Myliki. She is within me. And I may face the same fate as Makar, but she has allowed me to stay and do what must be done and live a proper life and see everything through to the end and including spend time and be with you. We will have our kingdom. Our people will know peace. And when the time is right, then I will go, but not a moment before. And I needed you to know that you are the reason that I did not openly embrace her immediately. You are my home, Duran, and you are my future. I do not know what you mean when you say you are my lucky, but I understand now that anything is possible when I am with you. I do not accept that our time is to be brief or cut short, but I want to... Every minute I spend with you, King, is is a victory, and I want to hold on to every second I get with every moment, every battle, every meal. I want to cherish every bit of it. I don't know what's going on with you and Myliki, but I will hold on to every moment I have with you, and I will save you from whatever fate I can, and I believe anything is possible together. I slowly melt, like lean forward and like melt in his arms, and I say, you make me feel safe, and I'm glad that I can protect you too, and you feel the same. I don't- Protect me? Oh, oh you, you did hear what I said then. Of course. I, I don't fully understand it yet, and I'm still processing it. And I think talking it through with the others might reveal some more, but I did not want to say these most important things in front of them without saying it to you first. You were rightful to worry as you did and say the things you said. And I'm sorry for causing the fight in Fia. I I don't want to leave you. I don't want to leave you early, and I don't want to leave you at all. Then you stay are... here with me in this bed. Of course. We will also triumph together and find new, be- new beginnings together. We will make it work. And I'll just like sort of sigh. It's hard, but I know we can do it together. Together, and not just us. But you, me, was it Horatio, Monaco, Cal too, and somewhere out there, Silm, Galdrim, Scarlet are all fighting for this. We can do this together. I think, I think after story time and dinner tonight, let's all gather. And I have a few pieces of the puzzle to put together. I have some more information and we'll be able to find a future together. So as you... Two lie in bed together, a little extra, discussing your thoughts and feelings. Uh, the rest of you uh, rouse up. Cal, um, you find a table over close to the head of the stage, and you see walking by, going through uh, one of the doors, Monaco and Horatio. And Horatio, you two also see Cal kind of over at the table. It doesn't seem very busy in that area yet, though people are starting to walk in and get served meals. I... Uh walk over to Cal and uh, I don't know if Monaco walks with us as well. I, I want to assume she does. Yeah, she, she does. A- after, I imagine Cal kind of flags us down. Uh, she points over and says, hey, you want to grab a seat? Yeah, let's go. And uh, as we get to the table, Horatio pulls a chair out for Monaco. Thanks. How was how was the massage? It was really good, actually. Do you, fi- do you feel... Uh... Charged in an arcane way? Uh, I definitely feel energized, yeah. Oh, that's good. I feel like I could, I feel like I could, I could. And she, she, she reaches into her pouch and she pulls out a coin and she flips it and then attempts to grab it out of the air uh, dexterously with, with her lack of dexterity. Hey, roll me a dexterity check. Aha! Um, <laughs> she actually rolls a natural 20 and, and, and a plus three for 23. Okay, so you the way you snatch it quick in the air. Both of you blink and say, "See how f- you never see Monaco move so fast, so nimbly." Uh, but she catches in the air and it appears into her hand again. She kind of slides it between her fingers. Feel powerful. Wow. Yeah. Hey, did you guys 
did, did you two just do the one hour or yeah we did the one hour uh i don't think we wanted to uh spend too much money there it was great i was willing to but maybe at a later time it well, definitely felt worth it but you know we can't spend all day there of course just seeing how charged up you are monaco i'm surprised you didn't want to spend all day in there you deserve it with all the all the cooking and care that you've been giving king oh i don't think so but it's good to hear you say so would either of you enjoy or care for a drink yeah while we're waiting for our elven friends let's get started on our drinks okay you eventually a waiter walks up to you and looks at you as like, like a human waiter uh wearing uh uniform clothes that match the color scheme of the interior of this inn um they go over and says hi can i take your order uh yes of course uh have a strong mead for me and horatio monaco uh your strongest liquor on the rocks please uh i don't suppose you do warm sake oh Oh, we, it's very expensive, imported from Shiverin, but yes, we have warm sake. She kind of shrivels up her nose and says, um, I'll try a local favorite. Oh, so is that a no to the sake? That's a no to the sake. Mm -hmm. I realize, you know, (sighs) when in town, right? Certainly, we'll get you the chef's special. Um, That'll be all. Uh, For now, there's there's still some of our party uh, we are waiting on, so just Uh, the drinks for now. Excellent. They leave, and after a few minutes, very expediently, they return with drinks as well of what you ordered. The, you both get the same mead, um, although Horatio smells a little bit stronger uh, than the alcohol coming from cows. Um, and of course, you get a sweet cocktail. Like It's very beachy themed with oranges and other types of fruits into it with Little Umbrella Monaco as the chef's special. Like a frozen cocktail. Uh, oh, I didn't expect it to be filled with ice. And the, the gentleman turns to you, well, of course. Uh, people like to cool off here and have a nice frozen drink. It is so hot. Agreed. So, Cal, are you going to tell any stories? Uh, I don't... Uh, I don't know. I I kind of wanted to, to hear some stories and see what the local people have been doing around here lately. I figured it's the best way to get the drop on things that have been happening lately that's actually a really good idea yeah um although if people aren't really allowed to leave might not be a lot of stories well for now but who knows maybe we'll hear something about someone coming in from the capital yeah or maybe we'll get some insight into all this um undead nonsense correct she kind of stirs her drink and stares into it uh, Horatio says, "Men, those two sure are taking long to get here." As he takes a sip of his drink, uh, it's their loss. They'll just have to catch up later. Whenever we're deep into our glasses, yeah. You guys sit for a little bit and get halfway through your cups, and um, the waiter comes by again, but you hold off for a little bit longer until eventually Duran and King, you guys, rouse up and try to go meet up with the group. Great table! Thanks for coming so early. Nice of you guys to join us. Sorry, I was just so tired. It's all right. I'm feeling so much better now. You look like you have a glow about you. I suggest you do the uh, sapphire scrub. It is great. Oh, well, maybe I'll do it in the morning before we leave. There's an idea. Do you think it will help me with my magic wizard ratio? It might, actually. Although, yeah, you should do it as well. I mean, we paid for it. You know what else we paid for? Drinks. You should join us. Okay, I'll just have a little. Ah, uh, King, have a lot. Okay. Wait, he's recovering. Yes, and what better way to cleanse the system than the healing power of alcohol? <laughs> Cheers to that. Glug, 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 glug. And I'll drink the rest of his glass. I'll need another. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that was refreshing. Okay. So, um, about a cu- uh, the waiter comes back. Uh, by again a little time after and you've been here for waiting for a little bit of time and then you get here talking amongst yourselves or uh, a couple hours pass and the waiter comes by so often filling your drinks um how much how many times would you you get the opportunity to at least fill your drinks at least twice so it would be your free round and then two more you could pay for if you so choose if not um you can if not you don't have to 
but that much time passes by. Um, eventually, the crowd starts to pile up, and you see there are several people sitting down at all the tables. And it's getting pretty packed in this area, and the lights begin to dim a little bit. While the lights are dimming, uh, Duran wants to kind of look around and make sure he can figure out where how to get out of here. Uh, even though we've gotten here and everything's better, he's still on guard because he suspects enemies. Okay, roll me a perception check. Duran rolled a 19. 19, okay. You have a... Although it's a crowd, some people are even standing up, you're easily able to see through them and see the pathway in there. Plus, you're an elf, so you can see into the dark, so the dim light doesn't hinder your vision. You see a clear path out. Though no trouble seems to be afoot, just to be normal patrons coming. Monaco will be having several drinks. Uh, okay. A couple of chef specials, I imagine. Okay, roll me a constitution check. Ooh, wow. A natural 20. Oh, two in a row. Okay, you're going good. You're taking these drinks, and they're not hitting you. You don't know what it is. This must have been the massage, but you feel great. <laughs> After seeing that Minako's first drink is this nice, cold, frozen uh, beverage, uh, I will also switch to having that to just cool off a little bit more. Okay. You can also make a constitution check, as these drinks are strong. This resort don't play. That is a 19. 19. You're good, too. Uh, you can taste how strong these are, but you're just like, huh, the lotion drinks. You got stronger and shivering. Oh, Monaco, this drink is very good, and I love how cold it is. It's so sweet. It is. When's the show start? Shortly, I believe. It's the our, our host over it's there. Giving. Yes, our host over there told me a couple hours, and that was a couple hours ago. So I assume very soon. And as you say that, you see the uh, gnome elderly uh, gentleman come up, the one who had helped you before. You see him walk up, and people were muttering, and everything quiets down as the lights dim. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Beachside Inn's storytelling. Here we invite adventurers and sailors to gallivant about their exploits and let us know a true tale that we can carry on and share with our loved ones and enrich the storytelling history that us is of uh, Thelos. So, to start it off, I will tell you all of a short story, one that I heard of many years ago. And he begins walking around, and he moves his hand, and as he does, you see him start to catch presentation, casting forth uh, images and sound effects, exemplifying his uh, presentation. Thousands of years ago, the world wasn't as we saw it before. There were no Shiverin and Thelos, but one gigantic Igbriel. And then chaos came about. Slowly but surely, it tore the world asunder. But the powerful Trius, and as he does this, he shows the image of Eros, Erebus, and Gaia as he allude, like a minor illusion, causing sparks in there, and you hear the crowd go, Ooh. The Trius has walked through the gates of heaven and brought forth order and balance. Where the old gods sought only to fight the chaos to breed more of it. And in doing so, you see images of some gods you recognize, some you don't. Of the old gods of Prolefsi, and people are just like, mm. But... A truce, a peace treaty between the Prolepsi and the Aegis bore forth a new age, whereas the world was broken apart, and you see explosions and other sound effects happen. We were able to grow and use the ability of the symphony to protect us, and now the trees fight in our honor to protect all of mankind and all those throughout Duskhaven to break the curse of night once again and it finally ends with them with a continue continuing uh, showing of sparks and images and then everyone starts to clap for him he takes a bow thank you thank you thank you so do we have any others who wish to come up and tell a tale and um one gentleman goes ah i have a story to tell well please sir please step on stage and tell your tale um and there's just a uh, gentleman 
He's fairly dressed, uh, albeit he looks a little uh, a short human gentleman. Looks a little uh, kind of shivering and scared. And gets up towards the front, and the spotlight shines onto him. This is a a true story. It's something that I saw a couple days ago out uh, out in the street in, in the in the wilderness of Thelos. Uh, I was out with my caravan, trying to get to Rainbow Ridge. All was peaceful. Our symphony, uh, keeping us protected from the demons around us. But then, everything got strange. The howling that we normally hear in the in the background faded, and all we saw were these red eyes staring at us, keeping a, a distance. I've never seen so many eyes before. As we continued up north to Rainbow Ridge, that's when we saw, p- pulling themselves from the ground, these skeleton corpses with their red eyes and their dripping flesh. We ran further and further, uh, finally making our way up to Rainbow Ridge. But that's when we saw it. This walking skeleton with long gray hair, where with bony fingers and glowing red eyes, and a black crown of flesh on its head, a bone in flesh on its head. It pulled creatures from the dirt, undead. It, it took my friends, my family. I ran... I ran all the way back to Beach Bell as fast as I could. So please, if you're heading out there, beware. What they're saying is true. Darkness is ahead. The dead walk among us. And he walks off of stage and everyone is just just silent. Throughout the course of the night, more people come up and tell stories. Some pretty cool stories, some very boring ones. And they all put on, some of them put on a show using arcane arts. If any of you wish to go tell a story, they constantly go for the next few hours saying, People come up and tell your tale. Um, so at any time you can if you want. If not, the evening will just continue on. I don't know. I, you guys all know me. I kind of want to tell a tale, but I don't know if it's best to rock the boat here in Thelos. Maybe we should just observe tonight. I think that is a good idea. Besides, let's sit back and let someone else give us a new story for once. We don't need to be the story. I agree, Duran. Okay. You hear several stories. Story about legends, about this, and stories from sailors about creatures. You even hear a story about uh, a sighting of a demon dragon turtle out at sea. These sailors sounding these stories and chuckle at that, as you hear mention of such. Uh, but the night goes on until it gets into the late hours. Before it gets very late, like around ten thirty or quarter to eleven, I'll say to the group. I I have some things I want to discuss with you all tonight before it gets too late. I just wanted a few moments of respite and hear the stories of others. Can we go back? Of course. Should we head up to one of the rooms? Uh, yeah. We're all paid up here, right? So all your bill probably cost you about ten, uh, no, five gold. For all the drinks and all that that you've had. And you all are feeling a little tipsy. Horatio puts two, uh, he'll put three gold on the table. Okay. I look at Durant. Can you can you cover the rest? You say you, between all of you, you put down the five gold and an extra three. If you're tipping three, are you tipping three gold? Is I'm tipping you're... three gold. Yeah. Big tipper. As you put down your eight gold on the table, they you do notice them run over their table and they're looking at it and they're like looking pretty like yeah. <laughs> and they're the servers, them. right? They're the yeah. servers. Yeah, the servers. Uh, we'll be like, make sure that gets into your pocket and no one else's. Thank you. And he goes and puts into his pocket. And share with your colleagues. Of course. Uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Fantastic. And you all head up towards... I don't remember room. You can say Kicks and Kings since you offered it. You all head up into your room. Um, it's, uh, it's spacious enough. You have a seating area, of course. Um, that you can sit in a balcony as well. And you all make your way up the stairs. Using your badge, announcing the 10th floor. And then going through the wall door. Before heading into the room. Alright. Um... I wasn't in a... I was not in a lightless slumber. I was complicated and straightforward. It's crazy, and I hope you believe me, but I I have been in contact and learned a few things that I needed to share with all of you. Uh, and like, in, and as I say that, I sort of like realize and snap towards to Horatio. Horatio, you didn't use the paper, did you? I did not, no. Oh, thank goodness. Praise be her name. I'm, and I like look down for a second as everyone sort of settles. And then I like look up towards everyone and I'll say, I am the embodiment of Myliki. 
she rests within me and everything Duran says, and I squeeze his hand as he, as I say that, said and worried about is true. I thankfully have been able to bargain, barter, persuade, whatever you want to say it, more time. And this scar, and I'll pull down my chest and reveal it, is my, uh, is my sense of how much time I have left. I have to be careful, but I still can do the things I need to do. And let me start from the beginning. I did see her. Myliki is within me, and she is beautiful and gorgeous and home. And she had by her side the most beautiful technicolor chromatic unicorn, and I felt safe. And she told me eons ago there was a world of wonder and everything was filled with splendor. All races, all people, everyone lived in harmony on the planet. Chaos, and I look towards Horatio, and chaotic energy is an unknown force that is seeping into our world and trying to destroy us. The divine gate and the gods use their powers to fight on all of humanity's behalf and shield us from the corruptive powers of this chaos. No good can come of it. None, like wipe away a tear. The old gods and Myliki confessed. They thought that they were shielding us absolutely, but they were not. And some of the chaos energy has bled into our world and slowly started to change the people and the land. And some people believed that they could wield this energy for good when it is only used to corrupt. The Aegis broke through Eustacia into the realm of the gods and unleashed chaos. And I'll look towards Horatio and I'll say, Gaia understood that this was wrong and tried to prevent this from happening. But Erebos wished to wield it and opened the gates. This caused the fracture. This caused the void. This caused the layers to form and realities to bend and fold. Battles were fought and some of the Perlefesi and some of the Aegis, the new gods that came into being from this chaos unleashed, understood that it was not correct. And I'll look over towards Cal and Monaco and I'll say, Nyx understood that this was not how it should have happened. She and Myliki combined their powers to help seal or heal the land as much as they could until champions and other people could be found to restore it. But in doing so, she gave up herself and her essence was almost scattered. But I was able to harbor her. And that is why when I was a child, I grew sick. My body was adapting to the divine within. And she has been with me for so long that as she is starting to seep out, and I'll pull the scar back and I'll say, this is divine. This is holy light leaking out. And she said, I can, I'll squeeze Duran's hand for energy and comfort and close my eyes for a second. I can do what I need to do. We all can. We can support each other. We can defeat Duramo, save Galdrum, heal the lands, find a home for our people, save Fia, save your land. We can write this all together. She said I could. She even said I could spend time with the people I love, all of you. And then I look towards Durand and you. But in the end, I do accept my fate and I will ascend with her into something new, but not yet. It is not my time. She said it is my choice and I choose to stay. That's a lot. I'm glad you're here, King. I could not ask for better friends and family, and I just wanted you to know the truth. And hearing the tale this evening is causing great heartache. These people believe that the Trius, the first three of the new, Gaia, Eros, and Erebus, they worship them, and they are the bringers of chaos. So our message will not be easy, and it will not fall on open ears. It will fall on deaf ears, but we must say it and we must, we must persevere and save this land. We have more to do. <gasps> just like, give like a sigh and just sort of like collapse, but not faint. 
Say something. Any of you, just say something. I feel like I'm going crazy. It is. I'm glad you chose to stay, King. How could I not? What you've said tonight, we'll have to ready ourselves to rid the chaos and restore things. We, we need to restore things, too, to find a balance and order. Order. Horatio, please, yeah. please do not use that scroll and that paper. If I had it, if I had it in my hands, I would rip it right now. You cannot. Horatio takes out both scrolls that uh, have been imbued with uh, chaos spells into them and begins to rip them up in front of King. <gasps> Gaia didn't use it. And if King is telling me not to, I'd be a fool to use it. Horatio! I'll run over and give him a hug, even though he's mid-rip. I'll stumble since I'm slightly drunk, too. Horatio gives him a hug back and says, I'm really glad you're still with us. I thought you weren't going to believe me. I thought you were going to fight me. Thank you. Thank you. I know that this is the right thing to do. I believe so, too. And I'm only here to fight you when I feel you might be wrong. Not always. I know. Families fight, but not always. <laughs> Families fight, but not always. I like that. I think that uh, we should all rest up and see what tomorrow has for us. Yeah, that's... It's been a long day. These undead things are just terrible and these people of Thelos, their loved ones deserve to rest something is eating away at me and tells me that we should investigate riverside oh rainbow, rainbow Ri ridge rainbow ridge estate but the the they said that they encountered undead on the way from beach bell to Thelos and on the rainbow ridge estate do you think that there's some corruption in the middle that's spreading if, out if it's possible. I mean, that story that person told spoke about a large skeletal f skeletal figure with a black crown of bone and flesh. DM, has Horatio ever heard anything about a black crown of bone and flesh as a sage? Okay, so roll me a history check at advantage. Mm. Ooh, that is a 17. I would like to use that d6. Uh... That was granted to me just to beef up that number. Uh, wow, a max of 6, which brings the total roll up to 23. Okay. So you... Um, so you feel refreshed and energized from your sapphire scrub. And it opens up the blood veins and you're able to think and remember. Uh, after hearing the description that the... The entire description of everything that the gentleman had described about the tales of the undead at the Rainbow Ridge Estate definitely sounds something similar to, oh, you hope not a lich, but maybe something similar to one? Or or if it is one, then you know it's one, you're in for one hell of a ride. Something that can, that description reminds you of uh, yeah, that. Yeah, so Arisha would say, I mean, everything that that guy said just... For some reason gives me this feeling that it might be a lich and if that's the case cal i'm pretty sure you know that that is bad news definitely bad news that's someone who's been cheating death for maybe hundreds yeah. of years yeah i know that uh retired captain tybalt tybalt however he wanted to use his name he told us not to help but i don't think kalimvor sent us to this town instead of going to any other port or at least me i know you all will join me I have no doubt in my mind about that now but i think we're destined to travel this path and if we can help out any of these Thelosian unity warriors that they needn't ask we we have a mission and in order to get to the king of Thelos, king terminus it's not going to be easy but we didn't sign up for easy Especially with the message we have to bring. Of course. That may cause a lot of problems. The message mean? itself, I mean, we're telling these people to basically stop praising their gods. Well, that's not all the message from the queen oh, no. is. The queen's asking for aid. Yes. Let's not muddy the messages right now. Well, these people may be misguided. They still need to live their lives and happily. Let them, let them believe what they need to for now. We have more important things to tend to, but this is something that we will, at some point, have to address. But there's an order to I these agree. things. So tomorrow, we wake up, 
we get our new clothes and we make our way, the, there's no telling what those Unity Warriors are going through right now. Or Unity Knights. There's no telling what they're going through. They might need our help sooner than later. Especially if what you say is true, Horatio. About a I lich. Mean, hasn't been confirmed. I can send Hootie to go check, but it just sounds a lot like it. What's a lich? Kyle, do you want to take this one? Well, my knowledge is limited. I know that they are powerful undead sorcerers calling upon necromantic powers, stealing souls and lives to power themselves. They're definitely evil and they tend to put fractions of their soul into phylacteries just so that they can live forever, even though they're technically dead. Undead. They're sorcerers that want to live forever? That's There's no way. That would drive you yeah. crazy. That, that's what happens. It eats away at their souls until there's nothing left but evil energy pushing them forward. Oh, nice. Is there a way to slay them? I like the way you think, Duran. I, th- I think we can do it, but Horatio, maybe there's something else you can find out about their phylacteries? I, I-, I don't know what those are. Do you have anything in your in the number of books I always see I mean, you reading? I would have to check. I-, I still haven't even finished the tomes that I got from two levels ago or a level ago, but from what I know, we could destroy the body a thousand times, but if the phylacteries are still intact, it'll all, the lich will always come back. Then we'll have to find where this lich's source of power is coming from. Queen Camilla is alive, but for how long? I don't know if we can go off on this first. Maybe we should do as you said before and aid the Unity Knights on our way to Thelos. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I don't, I don't think this is something that we need to... I mean, it's going to get urgent, but... We have more pressing matters. I think we should just keep that on our radar. I think it is a good idea to help where we can to build good rapport, but... I, I, I agree, King, but it's also, I, I don't think, a coincidence that this lich... Is here? Extremely powerful enough to shut down all the caravan trading. Uh, this, is, this is recent. This may have something to do with Durama. And Deja Vu and the others. Yeah. So then what do you suggest? I suggest we we make way to the capital, take care of our business for the queen, help out however we can along the way, and maybe we'll even find out that this lich has something to do with what's been going on in Shivering. And if that can help free up forces for Thelos to send them to Shiverin and help the queen and Fia and take care of these problems that we're having, then then maybe that's serving the greater good. At that point, Horatio snaps his fingers and Hootie appears on his hand, and he walks over to the balcony and says to Hootie, your safety is the number one priority, okay? need you to go to Rainbow Ridge, to north, northeast of here. Fly over, let me know what you see. And I kind of give him like a little nuzzle right under, like right on the side of his chin, neck, and ask him to fly off. You go ahead and summon Hootie from your pocket dimension. He appears after being nuzzled. You release him out from the balcony. He begins to fly off into the dark sky, uh, heading off to the direction that you proclaim is Rainbow Ridge. Hootie will keep an eye up for us. All right. So, as you all ponder, talk, and discuss the evening, the night draws on, and you all begin to feel tired, especially from the drinking that you had did prior and, so there's, and unless there's anything else you wish to say, you all kind of go on to your own rooms to rest for the evening, to discuss your plans further. And as you all go on and retire, Duran and King, you remain into the room, uh, cozy up into your bed and fall asleep or trance and to the evening while each and every one of you do your own nightly rituals and fall asleep. Before Horatio falls asleep, he lets Minako know that he's about to go to bed. As soon as she's uh, warned of that, she begins to prepare the dream spell once again, uh, this time targeting Horatio, prepared to show him some of the, the truth that she has seen. All right, so as you all head to bed, Monaco, you go ahead and take out your reagents. Horatio, you open up your mind, opening to whatever Monaco wants to bring forth before heading to bed. And Monaco, you go ahead and start to perform and cast the dream spell. What dream are you casting upon Horatio? She's giving him a detailed dream of of things from the, that she has experienced. Um, first, 
uh, you, you, the, the the landscape is clear. Um, it's uh, and he sees her as, as, as with the other crystal maidens, um, and Minako's there uh, with him, watching as the demons begin to descend on on them. And uh, it it cuts to her hiding and speaking to the darkness, and uh, then a light comes out of her and just covers the whole land, and there's there's no more demons. Uh, within sight uh but her wrist uh it has that burn on it and she kind of like holds it and and winces um there's there's a fading of images and it's them on kuro mountain uh and she's dancing uh dancing with her patron uh you can see that uh the hand uh clearly visible to her holding her as she does a twirl um and he says that he'll give her the power to protect the ones she loves and that they will be together soon. And he calls her beloved. Um, she says, I trust you and I love you. Um, and then it shifts again and it's her in the darkness alone, whispering to a candle. And uh, she seems to be in a great deal of pain. And she says, I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. I'm sorry, I, yes, I, I love you. And then there's a, there's a blur once more and it's her uh, w- with, uh, casting a spell again uh, within the distance you see King struggling and Minako with a tear streaming down her face uh, as she casts some sort of spell on him and her wrist just um, and then uh, there's this once more a blur and it's her standing uh, over the two of them uh, Horatio and King together inside their 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 magical sphere uh about to uh gain proper um uh visions and and she once more her wrist begins to burn and she holds her hand out and breaks the spell and as the um and as the 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 sh- the spell around Horatio and uh King shatters the dream begins to shatter with them and uh Horatio is left alone in the darkness with Malco's voice just saying please forgive me king and that's it and with that we will end tonight's session Woo-hoo! that is heavy that hitting is a lot oh that's my heavy. god that is a lot <clears throat> that is a lot Horatio is shooketh I did not know she was gonna just be like okay here's all the tea all of the tea has been spilt Here's the the tea! Hi! I'm the Tail Weaver Omar, and DM here at A Tale of D20's Network. Hi, I'm Zektown, and I am the DM here at A Tale of D20's Network. Zek, you know I am the dungeon master for the drama-fueled, anime-inspired fantasy epic Descent into the Void, right? Yes, but Omar, you know I am the dungeon master for the comedy-riddled, trope-smashing fantasy epic The Natural Ones. I guess both of them are perfect shows for a tabletop podcasting network. It's a good thing that people can find us at a tale of d20s.com then. <laughs> yeah. You can also find us on Twitter at a tale of d20s. That's at a t a l e o f d 2 s a tale of d20s. And you can find each show on Twitter at the nat ones cast at t h e n a t 1-S-C-A-S-T The Nat Ones Cast or Descent Void at D-E-S-C-E-N-T V-O-I-D Descent Void on Twitter. So, if you want thrilling drama (laughs) or a side-splitting comedy A A Tale tale of D20s has you covered. covered.